Okay, so here we are on the next unit after transformers in our class, and we're going to be talking about the DC motor, specifically the brushed DC motor. We'll uh, talk later about, in a later video, about what the distinction there is, but there are brushless DC motors, so, but we'll get to those. So what we're looking at here is uh, the most basic element of a DC motor. And as the headline says there, uh, the basic operating principle of a DC motor is based on an electromagnetic phenomenon referred to as the Lorentz force. The idea of this is that if you have a current, so I've labeled that uh, right here, you see a little purple marker. Okay, so there's our current. Remember that the dot in the middle means that the current is coming out of the screen towards you. And when we put a current like that in a magnetic field that remember goes from the north pole of this magnet on the left to the south pole of the magnet on the right. So it leaves north, goes into south. If you have that configuration where the current is perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field, there's this current carrying piece of wire is going to feel a force okay and the force that it feels is upwards okay and the question that we want to answer here is why that direction okay so the way you figure that out is via a variation on the right hand rule now you remember the right hand rule from when we were talking about um, our first electromagnetic effect which is the idea that a current creates a magnetic field around it and you put your thumb in the direction of the current you wrap your fingers and the way that your fingers wrap naturally is the direction that the magnetic field goes the field lines go around that current now this is a different thing this is a current being placed in a field being caused by something else so in this case a couple of permanent magnets the basic idea of this right-hand rule to figure out that the force on that wire is upwards is outlined here. And I don't do 3D drawing very well, so let me talk through what this diagram is telling you, okay? So imagine that you can attach some labels to your thumb, pointer, and middle finger, and you um, have F for force on your thumb, you have I for current on your pointer finger, and you have B for magnetic field on your middle finger. And if you make kind of a, you make your hand into like a ray gun, like you do when you're a little kid, okay? So your thumb is up and your pointer finger is out. There are right angles to one another. And then you stick your middle finger out so that it's at a right angle to your pointer finger. You'll have uh, kind of like an X, Y, Z axis set of axes there on your right hand, as long as you're holding all three of those fingers sort of perpendicular to one another. Okay, once you have that set, you just need to twist your hand around until you've got your, uh, your pointer and middle finger in the direction of the current and the field, and then your thumb will then naturally point in the direction that the force is on that current carrying wire. So here, uh, if you twist it around here, I'm doing this, you can't see it, but you should try it too. Uh, the current coming out of the screen, the field going to the right, and if you've done this correctly, you should see your thumb pointing upward, just like we've got in the diagram there. Okay, so that's the variation of the right-hand rule that we're going to be using to understand why DC motors do what they do. And that's the Lorentz force, or at least an aspect of the Lorentz force. So, now, if, 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 uh, if you've watched the video that I'll post a link to um, on the Brightspace page, you will see that this causes uh, the length of wire that's going in the magnetic field to actually feel force and be flung upwards and out of the magnetic field. Okay? That's not a particularly useful motor, right? We want rotational motion from our DC motor. We want to put in DC electricity and we want to get out rotational motion, mechanical motion. 
And so instead of having a single length of wire, what you do is you put a loop of current carrying wire in there. So you have one side of the loop here carrying current out towards you. The current comes up, comes across, goes back in and goes away from you. And so when you have this loop of wire, current carrying wire in the magnetic field, well, each one of those wires is gonna feel force in the opposite direction as the other. And so what you get is a twist and a torque. We'll talk about that in the next video though. Keep this one nice and short and thanks for viewing.